So hello, as the title of this video would suggest, today is a really special day. But before we go outside and uh, share the car with you, uh, off the back of the recent Turbo S collection video, turns out you guys really like stories. Uh, so today, it's story time. We are standing in the workshop of Chris Shenton Engineering, uh, which just so happens to be my uncle. And um, my love and appreciation for Aston Martin started right here, on this floor right here, and actually working on that very car. Um, this is where I had my first job, my first work experience. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like I have much mechanical or engineering knowledge at all, because my sole job was uh, swapping the starter motors on DB4s and DB5s. That was it. <laughs> so it's not like I learned much, but I, I used to spend summers here between school, and this was my first you know, physical interaction with the Aston Martin brand. And I know that I worked on this car uh, because it just so happens to be my uncle's car. Uh, it's been in his ownership for as long as I can recall. Every time I see it, it takes me right back to those summers. I was working on these cars when I was between the age of 14 and 16. It was at that time where you always have those dreams, don't you? You know, clients would come in and I'd just be this young guy working on these cars and you would just aspire to what these guys were doing. They were coming in here, dropping off their DB5 and I just thought, you know, one day, wouldn't it be awesome to be an Aston Martin owner? Well, I'm st stood here today, literally right here. I used to work on these cars, one of them being that car exactly. And outside, I'm gonna take you for a walk and talk around my very own Aston Martin DBS. There's one thing that cameras suck at, it's conveying weight, but, but I cannot tell you how dense and heavy these things are. So, I mean, this is pretty heavy for me now, changing these things day in, day out. This is the starter motor for a DB4. In fact, this is, a, this is an original one, look. Check it out right here. This is an, an, an unused DB4 starter motor. These are super rare. Pretty sure my uncle put me on this because when I was 14, I was extra small. <laughs> and so and in there is super tight. So what you would do is take off the engine manifold. And then you can just see that the starter motor sits just there. So with these out, this would then fit in there. And as a dainty teenager, I could get my hands in there, but I remember it was so tight and this thing is so heavy, you used to have to hold it with one hand while you fixed on the uh, first bolt. But that's how it all started. Appreciation with greasy starter motors. Honestly, I can't tell you how happy I am with this thing. If you tuned in to the beginning of the Modern Classics uh, episodes last year, uh, it was the first time that I ever stepped foot into a DBS. Uh, it was very kindly lent to me by Aston Martin Works, and it was a manual. That's the really important thing which we shall touch on shortly. Uh, but being completely truthful, um, I was never a big fan of the standard DB9, and I thought, when I drive the DBS, you know, they say don't meet your heroes. Is it gonna be a bit sloppy? It was far from it. It's such a beautiful driving experience which we shall share with you uh, soon but today we're going to go around a walk and talk of the specs and features of this gloriously sculpted car so it's a uh, well actually this is a 2008 car albeit it was originally registered as a 2009 car so it was built towards the end of 2008 uh, it was only eight and nine that they made the dbs available as a manual which is why i was very specifically after an eight or nine car so despite the fact that it says 07 there it is actually originally registered as a 09 car um, 07 it's just a mild nod to the cheesy James Bond theme. That's the only reason we've got an 07 plate on there. Uh, the colour, sadly today it's not super sunny, story of my life, but it's actually called a Storm Black. Now we'll try and get a shot of B-roll and splice it on top because if you get up close to the paint it has a stunning red fleck in it. It, it just makes the whole bodywork flare out and come alive and really shows up this um, amazing sculpture and contours. So let's start with exterior features. Obviously the, the biggest thing really that differentiates the DBS over the DB9, 
first and foremost is the way it looks. Now, when this car launched, I think we'll all agree it was most famously launched in Casino Royale as the first Daniel Craig Bond car. Ever since that day, I've just been besotted with the way it looks. Now, over its lifespan, which is only about 10 years, I think it's always looked good, but something about it over the last two or three years, I think it's come full circle in the way it looks. The aesthetics of it are truly timeless. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Anyway, let's go and uh, highlight some of the features which qualifies this as a DBS, starting with wheels and brakes. So these wheels were launched on this car. They were exclusive to the DBS. Uh, with this being a 10 year old car, it had done uh, 23,000 miles and it was beginning to show some early signs of wear and tear, namely the brake calipers, which here look nice and shiny, were not. <laughs> so we actually had those re-sprayed. So they're looking extra fresh now. But other than that, the condition of the carbon ceramics is spot on. Uh, that was also a unique feature on the DBS. Back in the day when this launched, it was 180,000 pounds. Imagine that 10 years ago. I mean, a 180 grand car now is a lot. And by the time you put some extras on it, it was pushing towards 200 grand 10 years ago. So the car came with lots of sexy features, namely weight saving stuff. So the car is uh, 65 kilograms lighter than the standard DB9. And that is in part two, carbon ceramic brakes. The whole bonnet is carbon fiber. The wings are carbon fiber and the boot is also carbon fiber. Unlike the modern day Astons, when you lift up the boot or the bonnet, you, you can actually see that it's made of carbon fiber. But interestingly, in order to get the uh, paint to match equally between the more conventional steel and aluminium panels with the carbon panels, they coated it in a special 200 micron thick epoxy, which would give it this beautiful coat so that when you're painting carbon versus normal panels, you wouldn't get a difference in weave or gives it that consistent black throughout, which I think is a quite a nice touch. And then we have these here, these carbon arms and everything you look at, it's all sculpture. It's so beautiful. This is the era when you put the key in the dash and before the car even started up, three things appeared on your console. It was power, beauty, and soul. And as cheesy as that is, I think it summarizes this era of Aston Martin perfectly. And then you depress the key, which wasn't called a key. It was called, look at this. It was called an ECU. And this is where it gets even cheesier. So that stands for the, <clears throat> wait for it, emotional control unit. <laughs> Yeah, exceptionally cheesy, but a beautiful thing. Um, and then we come around to the back. Sculpture around here gets turned up to 11. Uh, more carbon fiber. So the diffuser, if you were to compare the standard DB9 rear and this, they almost look like two different cars. When this launched back in 2008, that was considered a really aggressive diffuser. And the fact that it was also made of carbon fiber just makes the whole thing so beautiful. And then coming around to the boot lid, which is also exclusive to this car, also all made in carbon. It had that exaggerated kick here. Now I've no idea if it actually contributed to any aerodynamic efficiencies or downforce, but it just looks really sexy, doesn't it? As does, I love the S on DBS. It just suggests sexy road driving. <laughs> so what else uh, was exclusive to the car? Uh, basically every body panel on the exterior other than the doors was exclusive to DBS. Now, in the right light, when you have a nice clean black car, okay, this is fairly clean, but it's not spot on. It hasn't been to NVN yet for any treatment, but all of this sculpture here on these exaggerated side grills just makes the whole car just sit so well. It also had a lower ride height as well versus the standard car. And as, as we come back around to the front again, um, things like this, these big vents here. Now, what is unique to the front of this car is that the previous owner actually had the grille painted in black. I'm still in two minds whether or not I actually like that or not. And I'd be interested to hear from you actually. Uh, please share your opinion with me in the comments below. Should I return it to silver or maybe a brushed aluminium finish? I think when you stand back from the car, it might tie in more with these vents here. So perhaps that's something I'll end up doing a little bit further down the line. Let's just talk about these as well. Once again, more carbon fiber, exaggerated front splitter, uh, and that's just to uh, help keep the nose down at higher speeds. So yeah, wonderful thing, wonderful thing. Just before we discuss the interior, we gotta check out this engine. Here we are. 
This is, of course, it's not the last of the naturally aspirated V12s from Aston, but it's certainly one of the coolest. Behold, six liters of V12 naturally aspirated awesomeness. This, honestly, the way this thing sounds, I think that's the other defining feature of this car is the fact that it's a naturally aspirated manual V12. I mean, these are a real dying breed. So developing 510 horsepower, uh, one of the videos I'd like to do, being 10 years old and 23,000 miles, it will be interesting to, to see how much of that power has been lost at some point. Although driving it, it actually, it, goes like hell. Uh, so I'd like to get it on a dyno at some point and really find out where it is right now and perhaps any uh, tweaks or tunes that we can do to perhaps bring it back or even beyond. Let's see. But um, when it launched out of the box, it was 510 horsepower, 420 pounds feet of torque, and it was generating over 300 brake horsepower per tonne, which back then was putting it right up there with some proper supercars. Don't forget at the time, this was going head to head with the likes of the Ferrari 599 GTB. So yeah, it had some stiff competition at that time. And from what I can tell, they, they brought their A game. So we will discuss more about the bespoke chassis tweaks and engine upgrades when we go for a drive. But now I reckon it's worth hopping inside. For me, the inside is just as beautiful as the outside with the exception of the infotainment system, which probably felt old when it was new. More of that in a minute. So here we are, the inside of the car. So when the car launched, uh, they didn't actually offer back seats. It was what's known as a two plus two, only the plus was only for your handbag uh, because they ripped all of the seats out. Half of that was for a uh, weight saving measure. But in 2010, uh, when they launched the automatic version of this car, uh, for some reason, they also opted for the option to respec your back seat, but I like it as it is. The DBS, after all, stands for it being slightly more lightweight and just a pure driving experience. So no seats in the back, more space for your bags. Anyway, ECU, again, we'll get a close-up of that for you, but it's one of the most unique applications of a key I think I've still ever seen. I actually prefer it to keyless go, but because at least you still have this really nice slot in order to place your key. It just sits in there really flush. We won't start it until the end because I want to save the best until last. But uh, this right here, that is what it's all about. This six speed manual transmission. When it launched, this actually got quite a lot of criticism because it is quite, as far as manual sticks goes, that's quite a chunky stick. But just when you grab it, what I really like is when my ring bangs against it. It's just like a, it's a decent solid stick. And when you shift with it, it's, it's a positive, heavy shift and you just ride the torque with it. Anyway, I could talk about how it drives up all day, but we'll save that for the next video. So um, what I was particularly after when trying to hunt down one of these cars was black, number one, and then the interior had to be a combination of both Alcantara in the middle and leather bolsters. Um, not only that, but the condition of that needed to be pretty good. Now, these cars over the years have been properly used. The condition was fantastic. Uh, we did have uh, a slight bit of cosmetic work done on the dashboard because some of the stitching had sort of peeled off the dash, but that was a uh, real quick fix. Other than that, the interior is immaculate. It even still smells fresh. The infotainment system, which I just mentioned, uh, once again, I'll open that when we go for the first drive, but that would sit here in this uh, central console. Um, when you open up that screen, that's the only thing that really dates it. It really feels like you're interacting with MS-DOS. It, it is atrocious. Now, I am speaking to some people to see if we can get some interesting upgrades for it, uh, which I shall share with you soon. And then down here, lowest part of the dash, we have the traction control, uh, active damper settings, parking assist and fog lights. And then we have this interesting cup holder. Yes, that is a, that's, that's Aston's idea of a retractable cup holder. It doesn't hold any cups. I don't know what they're actually thinking about. They definitely put more attention in, into this. But one thing I will say, everything that you do interact with, cup holder clip included, feels quality. I mean, this could be out of a jewelry showroom. I mean, it doesn't do a very good job of holding the cups, but it feels amazing, as does everything that you interact with switch gear wise. There we have it. The first look at the DBS. Uh, I did catch it in some sunlight not too long ago, and there's some pretty bad swirl marks on it. So we'll take it to MVN. 
get it all looking absolutely spot on and apply the PPF and then see what this sculpture looks like under some proper lights. So much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao.